Okay, in this video, we're going to do one final example of L'Hopital's rule. Uh, this one is going to be, yeah, it's going to have a little bit of a twist to it. So let's see how this looks. And in this case, the derivative that we want to calculate is the limit as x approaches zero of sine of x minus x over x squared. So as always, our first trick is that we want to make sure that this is an indeterminate form to figure out if we can apply L'Hopital's rule to it. So sine of x, remember, looks like this. So sine of zero is equal to zero. So that's zero minus x is zero over zero squared. So that's zero over zero. That is an indeterminate form. So we can use L'Hopital's rule for this. So this is saying that this is equal to the limit as x approaches zero of the derivative of the numerator over the derivative of the denominator. So what's the derivative of sine of x minus x? Well, we'll take it term by term. Sine of x, the derivative of cosine of x, and then the derivative of x is equal to one. And in the denominator, we have the derivative of x squared, which is equal to two x. So what's that equal to? Well, we need to take the cosine of zero, and cosine looks like this. So cosine of zero is equal to one, so that's one minus one over two times zero which is equal to zero over zero. So this is also an indeterminate form. So what is that? What does that leave us with? Where can we go from here? Well, what we can do from here is we can use L'Hopital's rule to calculate this limit. So we'll just do the whole thing a second time. So we're talking about now the limit as x approaches zero again of the derivative of cosine of x minus one. What's the derivative of cosine of x minus one? Well, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. This is a constant, so it just goes away. And this is a linear term, so the derivative of two x is just two. All right. And what do we get when we substitute zero into here? Because I can tell this is not going to be an indeterminate form. So negative the sine of zero, sine of zero is zero. So this is negative zero over two. That's not indeterminate. So that's equal to zero. So L'Hopital's rule says, says that since this limit is equal to zero, this limit must also be equal to zero, which means that this limit up here is equal to zero. So this time we needed to apply L'Hopital's rule twice in order to get to something where we can, could calculate it. But that's okay, as long as it stays in indeterminate form, we can just do it again. If it ever came to the point where we were doing it as a large number of times and seeing that the function really isn't getting any simpler, we would realize that we couldn't use L'Hopital's rule on that, I suppose. But in this case, we could see that the denominator was going from x squared to 2x to 2. So that felt like something that was going to end eventually. Let's take a quick look at GeoGebra just to double check our work. All right, so here is the graph of sine of x minus x over x squared. And we can see that the limit as x approaches 0 is 0, just like just like L'Hopital's rule applied twice told us it would be. All right, so once again, you can use GeoGebra to double check your work just to make sure that you're on the right track, um, but it's not gonna be a lot of help for you in figuring out how to do the calculus and the algebra to verify that. So you wanna make sure that you're um, good at the calculus and good at the algebra for solving these problems. All right, so I'm gonna give you a couple problems of your own to work at. Um, some of them you can solve in one step. Some of them you might need two or maybe even three steps. Some of them maybe you shouldn't even be using L'Hopital's rule at all. So take a careful look at them before you dive into it. Show me your work and um, make sure if you've got questions that you bring them to me.